Sunday we talked about consistency in serving God. And we talked about what consistency is all about. Who can remind us what we talked about in consistency? What is consistency? We talked about four or five things that we can call consistency in serving God. What did we say last week? And when we said to be consistent is to be constant and regular in church attendance. That you are ever constant in church. Not that I come to church today, I do not come next week Sunday. Or you come today, you will not come another day. People will know the reason why you didn't come. You are ever regular and constant in church attendance. That is consistency. Number two. We said to be consistent is to be available when needed. To be available when God needs you. Yesterday we took some people to comforter program. They were there till this morning. And they are in the church today. I can tell you that there are some people, if they go for such program, they will, they will be sleeping now. When did they finish the program? The early this morning. What time? I'm, I'm sure it took around 4 or 3, 5 a.m. And they were there till 5. So they left there 5. They probably get to their homes at 6 a.m. And they are in the church. Is to be available when needed. Search your heart now. If you are the one that went for comforter yesterday, and you got home at 6 a.m. this morning, search your heart. Will you be in church this morning? If your heart is telling you that, ah, oh my, difficult, you have not started serving God. Serving God is to be. Available when God needs you. And I remember telling you that availability prepares usability. God does not use those who have talent. Your talent is not important to God. God uses those who are available. So when you are available, God will use you. Then he will endow you with the talent that you didn't have. So make yourself available to God. That is what we call consistency. And we said in the realm of the spirit, availability is more more important that, than gifting. Number three. We said to be consistent is to be devoted to the heavenly assignment. To be consistent, to be devoted and committed to the things of heaven. That everything you are thinking of is about the things of God. When things come to it's no longer about you and family, you think about the thing of God first. Your, your life, your mind is consumed with the assignment of God. And I remember I told her last week, if you want God to devote himself to you, you have to devote yourself to God. When you come to God, God accepts you. That's why God does not force anybody to make heaven. If everybody decides that they want to go to a fire, God will be looking at you till you go to a fire. So it is you that will come to God and then God will accept you. So we're talking about devotion to the heavenly assignment. And, so, and finally, we said to be consistent is to show up in church. Every service. We Regardless of what your mood is or how your body is doing you. Is to be in church every service regardless of your mood and how your body 
is behaving. And you know, sometimes you will wake up in the morning and rain is falling. Your body will tell you that this is the time to be sleeping in the bed. Now, let me tell you that that happens to everybody. Happens to every bishop, every pastor, every happens to every human being that is that are living on earth. When you wake up, your body wants you to go back to sleep. So you must dominate your body. That is what we call consistency. And I said anything that can keep you happily at home on Sunday morning can keep you strengthless in the hospital. It can keep you in the hospital. The devil that will speak to your mind and you will accept to be at home on Sunday, that devil can transfer you to the hospital. So you must dominate your mood. You must not obey your mood. That is what we call consistency. And we said to obey your mood is to obey the devil. And to obey the devil is to be under terrible attack. So those are the four things that we talked about last week concerning consistency. And we told us to note these four things. Success does not come by doing the right thing. Success does not come by you doing the right thing. Success come by doing the right thing consistently. Because because where I'm committed to my work and I don't have money. No, it is not your committed to your commitment to your work that will give you the success. I, I know the job and I'm doing the job but I'm not getting the money that I need from the job. No, you're doing the job is not what will bring you success. It is doing the job consistently. Whether the success has come or the success has not come. Are you getting what I'm saying now? That's why you see people will start business. And the next five years, they will not make profit, it, and they are still doing the business. And after five years, they will just click the right button, and then they will start making that success. But the first five years, they didn't give up. That's what we call consistency. Bishop said the first five years of Winner Chapel. If they don't have consistency, they will have stopped doing the work of God. People were not coming. The church was not growing. They were in Kaduna then. But look at living faith now, it's everywhere. Consistency is very key to our success. Number two, the great achievements are built upon consistency. Consistency. That's why when you see people within a year, he has changed job three times. That person cannot be successful. And I'm putting it to all of us now that have changed job consistently. Go and find out. Success will be very far. Because what that says to you. Or says to anybody, even says to God, is you don't know what you want. That's why they will be calling some people. It means that that person has been selling that thing for a very long time. We went somewhere yesterday, and the MC was saying, anywhere you see this woman, you will see Zobo. 
And he so in that person was not selling that Zobo that year. The person had been selling it consistently. The thing that you do consistently is what brings you success. The prayer you pray today is not the one that will be answered. It is the prayer that you pray consistently. That's why you must be praying every day. Jesus was telling disciples, he said, you must pray without ceasing. That's what we call consistency. Now, it is not when the devil attack you that you will pray. If it is when the devil attack you, then you started praying, you are in serious problem. The reason some people will see the devil and they will just issue just one word. The devil will run away because they have been praying consistently before that day. So if I pray now, the prayer I pray now is not the prayer that is answered. I've been praying every morning, every night, every day. That's what we call consistency. Now, I want us to know this as well. What you do for God, you get reward for it. But what you do for God every day makes you a friend of God. At that point, you are not waiting for reward. God is with you himself. When you don't pray, God just gives you everything that you need. When you serve God occasionally, God answer your prayer. But when you serve God consistently, God stay with you. At that time, you don't need to pray for some things. God by himself keep giving you everything that you need. Consistency is very vital for Christians. I went out when we started the service. And I met Pastor Yoka here at the entrance of the church. And I said, what are you doing outside at 9 o'clock with your phone? Let me tell you what he, what he said to me. He said that the, 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 a lady, she has, he has not seen a lady in the church as at 9 o'clock. And it's unusual for her not to have been in church by 9 o'clock. So he decided to go and call the person because he has not seen the person in church. Who, who was that person? Sister Christiana. Now, even if you don't come by 10 o'clock, people may not even know that you have not come. See, oh, but when you go, me, when you me, only my mom. Don't let that be your lifestyle from next week Sunday. Someone has not come by nine and people are looking for, they are jumping up on that. Where is she? Where is she? That must be your lifestyle. What can make one person to know that this person has not come by nine? God also know that that person has not come by nine. So for your life success, it's not the prayer you pray that gets answered. There are many things that revolve around our life for it to be successful. Consistency is one of the that is, you are doing something and God knows that you will continue to do it. You are serving God and God is seeing that this person is serving me. Even people around you will know that this person will ever serve God. It's a secret to success. I'm just saying that is the secret to success. When you serve God inconsistently, God will serve you inconsistently. I was telling my staff during the week. Someone sent my name and someone's name to someone. And the person did jerking jail on the names. Hallelujah. Consistency has a key to your life. My name and someone's name was sent to someone. And the someone that 
I can say the key to Asorok is in that person's hand. And the, all the person has to do is to just pick one out of the two names. Just to just do checking and pick one name and call the person. And the person called me. I don't know the person from anywhere. No, the person called me. Call me and I got contract from that person. But the second name too didn't offend God now. They, no consultation. They just say, no, let's pick this name. The person has called me and given me a contract before I realized that two names were sent to this person. What made the person to pick one name and not pick another name? Nobody knows. But the Bible says that Jacob have I loved. Esau have I hated. For you yeah. not to put your life on Kalo Kalo be consistent in serving God. If the person they didn't pick, if they have picked that person and they didn't pick me, even my staff know that any I hear I hear about it. I want a one more week, babe. His life would have been better. Because what they would have given to him would have changed his life forever. You don't need to lobby when you serve God consistently. Last week, Sunday, I told us again that Brother Blessing, I didn't see him in church by 9 o'clock. I also went out myself to call him. I think last week, I was going to go. Now, it is possible for you not to be in church on a particular Sunday. So, so, don't get me wrong, because sometimes your MD might say, come to work this Sunday. Or something might happen to you that will make you to travel. But the question is, do people around you know the reason you didn't come to church? Consistency is the foundation to your success. And from today, we must cultivate the habit of consistency. For all of the women that are here, Every one of you know that if you don't see Zafunke Ojo on Sunday, you will know that something is wrong. If she's not seated there, everybody will be looking. Where has she gone to? Do you know where she's coming from? She's not living in Lugbe. But every Sunday she must be in church. No. More people don't know it. When you come to church, it's not only to pray, it's to have an encounter. That's why you but see some people who come to church during the week. They just come without missing anybody and their prayers have been answered. Because when you come to church, God dwells in that place. And then you encounter something as you step into the church, you encounter something. And consistent encounter is what that brings about life transformation. Be consistent in serving God. Not just serving God. But consistently. Let people around you be able to say, ah, this if it is this person, ah, I know she will do this. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. If I ask all of you now, now after the service today, mention five people. That you can know that even when you are sleeping, that after the service today, they will sweep this floor. I'm sure you can mention five. And if I ask all of you to write the name of five people that will sweep this floor after service, you'll see that the name will be very similar. Because we all know some people, they are consistent in sweeping the church after the service. No, I'm not talking about sweeping the church. I'm talking about consistency in sweeping the church. That is, it has become your lifestyle. Now, you need to migrate from serving God to making serving God your lifestyle. Making serving God to be your lifestyle. From December last year, Everybody that are watching us online knows that our media has changed. 
Afefe mo wi pe media wa ti ato. Because someone come here and say for all white garments in Abuja, they are not sure anybody have the best media like our own here. Eni kan go so fun, pe ninu iju alaso fun fun oro pe ni keni ni media to dara ju ti wa lo bayi. Those who are coming to help, they are coming from Maraba. I want to wa ya ti ilu Maraba ni won tin wa. They come from Maraba every Sunday to this. Ni gbogbo ojo sin mi. And sometimes they get to church before those that are living in Lube. If there will be any reason for them not to come, they will make phone calls. So, if there will be any reason for you not to be in church on Sunday, who knows the reason why you didn't come to church? I'm telling you the reason why your life can be transformed forever. It is consistency. Not the person you know. It is not the person that you know. But how consistent are you in serving God? Someone was making a payment for something in the church. And the person realized that next week Sunday he will not be in church. And the person has paid the money of the next week. He has paid it today. So that there will not be gap in the service on that Sunday. How consistent are you in serving God? Can people see and say, ah, this person can really serve God like nothing else? And like I said, this topic we are going to treat it throughout this month of July. Because sometimes you will pray and you look as if your prayers are not answered. It's not that the prayers are not answered. It is God, God that has not found you faithful enough. God that has not found you worthy enough. And God wants to find you faithful. He wants you to be faithful. He wants to see you a faithful person. And that faithfulness has to do with consistency. It has to do with consistency. How consistent are you? And you know the, the major problem that Christian has. Especially those that God has blessed. Or those who are having small small money in their bank account. Now, if they are not consistent in serving God. And they are still being blessed. They believe that well, I don't need to be in church all the time. I'm, God is blessing me now. What they don't know is. There are levels in blessing. There are levels in blessing. You have five million naira in your account. Only million man only left for And you think you have arrived? What are we today? I was watching a program in Dunamis last month. Wait, so can you join Dunamis? And the man called someone out. The person was in the toilet. He was part of those cleaning the toilet of the church. And he called him out. How many staff do you have in your office? Over 200 people. The man was paying salary to over 200 people. And and they measure him, are you a millionaire or a billionaire? The, the man billionaire. is a billionaire. billionaire. And he was in the department where they clean toilets. What do you have that you think that you can serve God consistently? In fact, the level God wants to take it to, he's just waiting for you how consistent you will be when the money comes. Serve God consistently. Let God see that this thing you do, you do it every day. Let people that are in the church also see that what you do, you do it every day. Serve God consistently. Now, why must I be in church consistently? I'm going to tell us six, seven things why we must be in church all the time. Why we must not be inconsistent in your coming to church? Number one, you are not going to be inconsistent in your coming to church. Why must I be consistent in church? 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 
for you and myself. Let's look at Matthew 16, verse 18. Matthew chapter 16, verse 18. And say also unto thee that thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gate of it shall not prevail. He built the church for you. Okay, it's his church. But it is for you. Because if you look at Colossians chapter 1, verse 18. Colossians chapter 1. Colossians chapter 1. Verse 18. Is his church. But he built it for you. He built it for you. Because he is the head of the body. Which is the church. He said, Which is the beginning, the firstborn of the dead. That is all things that he might have the preeminence. He built it for you. Because he is the head of the church. You are just the body of the church. He's looking for a place where he can bless you and then he build a church for you. Number two. Why must I be consistent in church? Because it is a commandment from God. It is a commandment from God. It is a commandment from God. In Hebrews chapter 10, verse 25. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 25. I want someone to read it from King James Version. Why the media will display it for us? at class, classic amplified not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together yes as the manner of some don't is. forsake the assembly of ourselves together as some people usually do yes but exalting one another yes and so much the more as it's okay see the day they always be in the assembly of brethren together. And he's saying, don't forget the assembly of bre the fellowship of brethren. Don't forsake it. But if you look at it from Amplified Bible, classic Amplified Bible, Hebrews chapter 10, verse 25. Can we look at it? Can media display for us? Okay. And he's saying, not forsaking or neglecting to assemble together as believers to assemble that thing you must assemble consistently in Deuteronomy chapter 12 verse 5 that we read today let's look at it Deuteronomy chapter 12 verse 5 let's look at it from King James Version let someone read it in King James Version first and then I want the media to display it in New Living Translation and NIV to be in church consistently is a commandment of God it's our nomi 12 verse 5. It's our nomi 12 verse 5. King James Version, yes. But unto the place yes. which the Lord your God shall choose. God choose the place. Yes. Out of all your tribes. Yes. To put his name there. That his name will be registered there. Even unto his habitation. Yes. Shall ye seek. Yes. And Tita thou shall come. And you will come to that place. He said, you will put his name there. And that's where you will come to meet him continually. Let's look at it from New Living Translation. And also, let's look at it in NIV as well. And then we can get a better meaning of it. In New Living Translation, rather, you must seek the Lord your God at the place of worship that he himself will choose from among all the tribes. The place where his name will be honored. The place it doesn't mean that you can't pray pray to God in your house. Oh. But he said you yeah. must choose a place and put his name. That place where his name will be honored. He said you will go there and worship me. And so when you go to church, you have an encounter with God, even without praying, something is happening in your life. It is important for you to be consistent in church because it's a commandment from God. I remember last week I was telling us since I was born, I can't remember a Sunday I didn't go to church. Of course, I know some people are doing business and their business can take them to travel on Sunday. 
never I, I can't maybe maybe it happened I don't know it's never happened now on Sunday I'm not in church since I was born but want to be one what here or if I went there was no place to worship God we did service in my house Nick but to go to CBT want to my sing on what to chase in you know the blessing of God for you comes gradual so as you serve him, God is putting it somewhere for you. He's marking it for you. And the, your blessing, when the tank is full, that's when you see overflow in your life. That's why it's not what you do now that matters. It is what you do every day, every day. It is what you do every day. That's why you see sometimes you. See when rain, rain has fallen yesterday, for oh, example. But for farmers, if the rain didn't fall for the next one month, they will complain. So it's not what happened once, it's what happened consistently. It's like you have eaten yesterday. If you don't eat today, now you will still be hungry. That's why consistency is very key to success in life. Number three. Why must I be consistent in church? It is a place of teaching and knowledge. It is a place of teaching and knowledge. I know I was leading to a pastor one day. And the pastor said, if you see people that give problem to church, there are people that don't go to church regularly. That the one that will not go to Bible study. That the one that will not attend Sunday school. Because that's where they can learn the thing that can change their life. So when you see someone going to church regularly, and you can see that his life has not changed, it doesn't matter. Let him continue to go. The Bible says that faith cometh by hearing. And continue hearing of the word of God. You, you may not have seen changing in that person's life, but that he comes regularly. There's a spirit in him or her that is making him to go regularly. And it will just take a matter of time before you start seeing that changes in that person. Because church is a place of teaching and knowledge. In Isaiah chapter 2, verse 3, and Micah chapter 4, verse 2, Isaiah chapter 2, verse 3, he said, Let us go to his house. He will teach us of his word, he will teach us of the things that we need to know for our life transformation. Say, and many people shall say, shall go and say, Come ye. Let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the house of the Lord of Jacob. He will teach us of his way and we will walk. So when you go to that place of worship, you learn something. And it's not only followers, pastors, all of us, we learn something together when we go to church. Now, if you have not come today now, for example, you will have missed something that we are teaching so it is important for you to be in church regularly it's a place of teaching and knowledge consistent going to the house of God helps your spirit to develop when you don't attend service regularly there are some ideas you will have gotten that you will have missed sometimes I will finish service here I will go online. I will attend service. What am I looking for? I want to learn. Of a course, and you will see me with my book and my Bible, and I'm writing some of that myself as a person. And that's why, no matter who is preaching in this church, you will see me with my Bible and my book, I'm writing down. When the children were doing their, their, their children and the children harvest, most times the children are the ones that will preach. All the children that are preaching this church, I have their sermon. Sometimes I will review and I will read it. That's how to learn. The day you start learning, you start dying. 
80 years old man that is learning is younger than a 20, 20 years old boy that is not learning. And you learn in the church. The Bible says in 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 2. It it says, as a newborn babe, desire to learn, desire to learn the sincere milk of the word of God. And you do that learning, you get it as you go to church consistently. Number four. Number four is a place of gift development. It is a place of gift development. It is in church that you can develop your gift. Everybody has talent. Everybody has gifts. But it is in church that you can use the gift. You can't practice the gift at home. Because you need many other people that are gifted like you to work together for you to develop your gift. And I can tell you, there is no one without gift. There is no one without talent. It is when you use it regularly that it can bring, it can show forth. And you have opportunity to use your gift in the church. And it is when you come regularly to church that you can consistently use your gift. In Romans chapter 12 verse 3. Romans 12 verse 3. The Bible says God has given everybody a measure. A measure of gift. A measure of faith. So that measure of gift that you have. It is in church that you develop. So if there are things you can't do now, you have you can do it. It's because you have not been consistent in using it. When I first came to Abuja, and the church that I attended, there are some people that are preaching in that church. I'm just a choir person. I can sing. So I was in the church and I was singing. And God was using me to transform the music of the church. But there are some people, their own is to preach. Sometimes I will look at them and I will say, wow, these people are too good. How, how did they learn all these things that they are saying? Is it not the same Bible that we are reading? But let me tell you now, fast track after 10 15 years now some of those people that i was saying wow see what they are how did they know what they are teaching if they have challenges in the bible now they will call me for interpretation so you have gifts and you just have not developed it you have gifts you just have not developed it you have gifts you just have not developed it you have not developed it you have not developed it you have not developed it has not developed because you have not been consistent in using it in the church you have not developed it you have not developed it you have not developed it Nobody is a spectator when it has to do with church. We all have gift to use. If you have not read lesson, if you have not led Thanksgiving prayer, if you have not done anything, you can do it. All you need to do is to practice it. And until you come to church consistently, you won't be able to use your gift regularly. Number five. Why must I be in church consistently? For spiritual connectivity. Yes, for spiritual connectivity. The Bible says, Iron, sharpened iron. Proverbs 27, verse 17. When you meet with someone that knows more than you, you develop yourself. When a poor person meets with a rich person, he has the knowledge of a rich person. When a foolish person walks with a wise person, he becomes a wise person. So it is in church that you have spiritual connectivity. Proverbs 13:20 says, He that walketh with wise men shall be wise. And the companion of fools shall be destroyed. That's why, even in the church, you must know who is sitting beside you. Who are you? 
starting with every time in John. You must look at the life of that person. Is this what I want to become? If your answer is yes, get close to that person in the church. If that's not who you want to become, look for someone that looks like who you want to become. And move with that person. That's what we call connectivity. Spiritual connectivity has to do with you moving with someone that is greater than you. And you achieve that when you come to church consistently. Since I have been in Abuja, I'm as young as I am. As I'm, I am as tall as I am. But everyone that has been my friends, they have been older than me. Older than me. Everywhere you see people make me their friend, there are people that are older than me. Sometimes I, I don't know. But because my mind is so programmed that if you are below me, we can't work together. I want someone that will challenge me so that I can know better. You are a fashion designer. And all your best friends in fashion, there are people that are looking up to you on how to sew better clothes. How will you know better? When there are people that are sewing and collecting 100,000 rap or so, you are not moving with them. Same thing in church. You are learning, you want to learn how to dance. Look for people that dance very well in the church. Get close to them. You want to know how to sing. Look for people that sing very well in the church. Get close to that person. Iron, sharpened iron. Remember, it is when you come to church consistently that you can have spiritual connection. In fact, the Bible put a blessing on him when you connect yourself with the right person. In Psalm 1, verse 1 to 3. Blessed is everyone that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly. No, seated in the seat of comfort. But delighted. Understanding in the state of the sinner. Choose him, for his delight is in the law of the law, and in his law does he meditate day and night. What will happen to him in three? Then he shall be like a tree planted by the river. If you if you walk with white men, it shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water. And he said his fruit will not wither. He said whatsoever he doeth, he shall prosper in it. That's why you must come to church regularly so that you can have spiritual connectivity. I just told you now that since I was born, I have not missed a call possible. Where would I be on Sunday? Can you say that about yourself? There are people that have not missed Sunday service in this church this year. That if you don't see them on Sunday service, people will start calling them. Where are you? Where are you? Where are you? It's not that people are doing partial. It's because people have just known you that you are inconsistent. So when you do not come, say, if they call you, they will think, I hope they are not disturbing you. But if you come regularly and they don't see you, in one Sunday, everybody will be looking for you. Hope there's no problem. And number six. Why must I be in church regularly? To fulfill the great commission of discipleship. Yes, to fulfill that great commission of discipleship. Because we are all supposed to be disciples and follow Jesus, it will make heaven. You can't make heaven by yourself. Alone. You can't work your salvation alone by yourself. You need more people to help you together to walk in righteousness. Hallelujah. 
Amen. What is happening in this world now? If you don't walk with believer like you, to make heaven will be difficult. I, I was I was somewhere on on Thursday. Oh, I need on your Thursday. And the lady sat beside me. Even me as a man, I can't wear that kind of clothes. The, I, I was thinking within myself that am I seeing right or I'm in the dream. The, the cloth. The cloth is just where my I is the, I don't and shamelessly seated very close. Those are the people you are going to contend with in this world. So you need to be in church and become disciples for you to make heaven. The Bible says it is even difficult for righteous to make heaven. Not to talk of unbelievers. Those who come to church consistently, regularly, they are still struggling to be perfect. And you, that you are inconsistent, ah, devil will just be your, will just be smiling with you. Satan so it is coming to church regularly that make you to fulfill that commission of discipleship. Because this world is turning upside down now. In those days, when, you, when people have money, they spend their money to, to get a friend and then they sleep with all manner of women. But nowadays, women run after them without asking them for money. Because they are agents of the devil. But when you come to church regularly, hear the word of God, it builds your spirit. What you learn when you get home, you think about it am I doing right? Am I not doing it right? According to Matthew chapter 28, verse 19 and 20. Matthew chapter 28, 19 and 20. He said we should go to the whole world and teach all nations, teach nations, baptizing them in the name of, the Father, them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the, Son, and of the, Holy, and Ghost, of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe and then all teach things. them to observe to live right Whatsoever I have commanded the thing that God and Jesus has commanded us. And lo, yes, I am with you always. I will be with you. Even the Even unto the, the end of the war. That's why we must be consistent in serving God. So that our life can be transformed gradually. So that the world will not corrupt us. I pray that as this world enter into us, our lives will be transformed in the name of Jesus. Next week, Sunday. We are going to be looking at people that are consistent in the church. In the Bible. And what has happened to them. And what God has said concerning them. And then we are going to ask questions. What happened to you? That you don't come to church regularly. All of us would, would talk about it. It might be a challenge. Let's know the challenge. It might be the devil. Let's face the devil together. It might be family cause. Let's destroy the cause together. Because the devil knows that when you come to church, the Bible says they go from strength Psalm 89. Let's look at it. Psalm 84 verse 10. They go from strength to strength. He said, as you come to church, he said you receive strength. Psalm 84 verse 10. Who is reading it for us? Yes. This David talk, he said, when I spend one day in, your, in the church, yes, it's better than when I spend a thousand. I had rather be a doorkeeper. I would rather be in the church at the entrance, like my sister there. In the house of my God. Yes. Than to dwell in the tent than of to, wickedness. Than to dwell in the tent to go to party and go go to verse seven. They go from strength and then to strength. When they now go regularly to church, they now go from strength to strength. Every one of them. Every one of them. Every one of God. them. That's the advantage of being in church regularly. See, those who know me very well, if I stand like this for 30 minutes, it's always difficult for me to stand for too long. 
regularly, even in the office, I can't stand for too long. But when I'm in the church like this, I can stand for 10 hours. I, won't, I will not even feel it. Because when you go to church, you receive strength. You receive the strength of God. Can we be on our feet and talk to God? I need your grace to be consistent in serving you. I'm tired of inconsistency. The demon of inconsistency, Father, rebuke him in my life. Can you talk to God now? Talk to God. Talk to God. Talk to God. Or the person is praying. Talk to God. Talk to God. Talk to God. The demon of inconsistencies in my life. I rebuke you. 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 Help me to be consistent in serving you. In the name of Jesus.